Hey, hi, welcome. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at systems for the first time, and that'll really sum up the majority of the work that we're doing in this unit, okay? <clears throat> so let's dive right into systems involving graphing, okay? So what is a solution to a system? Okay, well a solution of a system of linear equations uh, is really all about finding the ordered pairs, all the ordered pairs, that make both equations true, okay? So it's more than just saying, oh, I can plug x equals 5 into both of them and that works, but instead you would have to find both an x and maybe a y value, uh, assuming it's a two-variable system, that when plugged into both equations makes both of them true, okay? So what does this mean for you graphically if we're talking about like plain old lines, you know, the work that you guys had done prior? Well, <clears throat> there are really only a few options, okay? Let me flip this over and we'll, we'll take a look at a few of them, okay? First of all, two random lines, uh, assuming we would graph these on a coordinate plane, well, they could of course cross, and that would indicate that there is only one location, one ordered pair, one x and y value that they share. Okay, so that's an example of a one solution, um, well, solution set for a system. Okay, alternatively, you could of course imagine the two of those maybe being parallel, right? Maybe you've got these two, but they're never actually going to cross. Okay, we'll use that parallel notation that we had talked about back in geometry. <clears throat> and of course, this is, an, this is an example where you're going to have no solutions, right? And finally, perhaps you graph these and they just happen to be the exact same line. So you graph the original, the first one, and then you graph the second one and they happen to overlap. Well, that would make basically any point infinitely a solution, right? Not any point on the coordinate plane, but any point on either line, okay? So this is an example of what we would refer to as IMS, infinitely many solutions, okay? Infinitely many solutions, there are an infinite number. Do not put all real numbers, okay? Because all real numbers would indicate, in this case, maybe like all points uh, on, on the entire coordinate plane work, and that's simply not true, okay? So all said and done, those are basically our three options. Let's just go about graphing some lines and see what happens, okay? And by the way, this should feel like review from uh, Algebra 1. It's just been a little while, and we're going to be building a lot on these, uh, these topics over the course of this unit, okay? So y is equal to 2x minus 10, y equals negative 3x plus 5. Of course, both of these are in slope-intercept form. y equals m times x plus b. So let's just go about graphing them. We've got a y-intercept of the first one, negative 10. We get a slope of positive 2. So rise of 2, run of 1. And given that we're graphing these, I'm using a lot more points than we may normally. Not only because they're given to us, of course, on this coordinate plane, <clears throat> but also because I'm looking for a very specific solution. So having all these nice sort of numbers or uh, coordinate pairs is, uh, is really going to serve our interest pretty well. Okay, so let's go about connecting those. We've got our first line taken care of. Let's do the same thing with the second one. Y equals negative 3x plus 5, so positive 5, of course, being our y-intercept. Negative 3 being our slope, down 3, right 1. And there you have it. Obviously, we can keep going with these. You can reverse it by going up 3, left 1, of course. But all said and done, we hopefully, we all see right where these are going to cross. Okay? And, of course, is it the point uh, 3, negative 4? 3, negative 4 is how we would list our solution. Get used to writing these as points. Uh, generally speaking, that, that's what I'm expecting. Algebraically, there are going to be times where you may put x equals 3, y equals negative 4, and I get that, but the truth is, again, these just mean, hey, it's a point. That's it. Okay. So let's try the uh, part B together. In fact, what I'd like you to do, if you feel like you already get the concept, go ahead and try B, C, and D on your own, and then come back to these notes and just see how they went for you. Okay. So on part B, you guys may notice uh, these, of course, are not the exact same, uh, well, parent function or form for lines. Um, in both cases, we've got an AX plus BY equals C. And so that indicates to us that we're dealing with standard form, right? So 2X plus Y is equal to 7. I know a lot of students are really tempted to just subtract off the 2X, but I just want to remind you real fast that there are fast ways to graph these, perhaps faster. All that you really have to do for standard form is plug 0 in for your x value. We can now easily solve for y. And then, of course, reverse that. 
just plug zero in for your y value and we can quickly solve for x. And in this way, not only are you finding two points, which is all you really need to define a line in the first place, but the two points that they are are really nice. They're both intercepts, right? When x is zero and we have a y value, that's going to be a y-intercept. When y is zero and we have an x value, that's going to be our x-intercept, right? So we plug this in, we get y is equal to 7. There's your y-intercept. We plug this in, we get x is equal to 3.5, okay? And a half, and there's our y-intercept. I'm sorry, our x-intercept. So let's just go ahead and connect these, okay? I will say this doesn't give you as many points as just converting it over and using your slope would, would give, kind of like what I had shown up there, but that's okay. They're not necessary, um, especially for the sake of speed. This one may, may work out a little bit better. So x minus 4y is equal to 8. Plug 0 in for x. We get negative 4y equals 8, so that means y is negative 2. Let's go down here and plot it. And then over here, uh, 0 for y, we get x is equal to 8. And we plot it. And we can just go about connecting those. Now, you may notice if I go up 2 and right 8, that's really all it takes to get from one to the other. If I were to go half that distance, just up 1 and right 4, that's going to be the point of intersection. So, All right, so we found our solution. It should be, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1. So 4 and negative. All right, third one, C here. Uh, we've got 3x plus y is equal to 5. Once again, these are in standard form, so I'll just go about solving those. Um, so if y is 0, x is 5 thirds. We get 5 thirds comma 0 is going to be our point, right? And if I plug in 0 for x, we're going to get y is equal to 5, so that's 0 comma 5. So 5 units, plot a point, 5 thirds is actually most of the way to 2, it's 1 and 2 thirds, right? So now we can go about connecting those. All right, 6x plus 2y is equal to 10. <clears throat> Once again, standard form is a nice approach here. Plug 0 in for x, y is equal to 5. So it's going to be right here as well, which is a good indicator. Um, we already know a point or a solution set they share. And now just plug 0 in for your y value and we get uh, x is equal to, once again, 5 thirds. Well, those both look familiar, don't they? It's because you've actually just graphed, I'm just going to do a dotted one so we can easily see both. And you've just graphed both right over top of each other, and therefore our answer here, you can just put IMS, or feel free to write out infinitely many solutions if you prefer. Okay? All right. Last one here, part D y equals 3x minus 5 and y equals negative 2x plus 4, both of which are slope-intercept form. Let's go about graphing them. Down 5, slope of 3, up 3, right 1. There we have it. Okay, and then y equals negative 2x plus 4, so up 4, negative 2, down 2, right 1. I'm guessing these actually are going gonna to cross here. Although now that I look at it, no, they wouldn't have because, again, our slope here is 3, so up 3, right 1, up 3, right 1. Um, what that tells us is that these aren't coming out so nicely, okay? And so, therefore, this becomes a really good example for why solving systems using graphing is just not the best route to go, okay? This is going to be some fractions, right? Um, we can estimate it, but again, keep in mind, this is not going to be exact. So in this case, I would say it's maybe like one and a half up a half. So we'll estimate this. Let's even put roughly 1.5 comma 0.5. Okay. And so that leads us into the second topic we're looking at today. Not just solving via graphing, but really solving using some algebraic skills. The first method, of course, being substitution. Okay. So you can join me in the next video. So if you have any questions, as always, feel free to email.